This is Chris with Innovonics. Today we're going to be talking about the six steps to programming the EN4204R receiver. As you can see, we've got our receiver here. We do already have power applied to it. The receiver needs 12 volts DC and at least 500 milliamps from its power supply. And next I'm going to show you how to open it. On the top we've got a single pry point and at the bottom we've got two pry points. So the easiest way is to get your pry point at the top, stick your screwdriver in there and pry it up. And we always want to make sure that we're prying and not twisting, otherwise it can damage the plastic. And the other thing that I want to point out is on the inside of the cover we've got a wiring diagram on a label. So you may want to reference that later on as you decide where you're going to put your wires, especially for that fault output. We'll put that aside for now and I want to point out a few things on the receiver. We've got our relays coming down the left and then coming across the bottom. We've also got a few LEDs on. We've got a green LED up here, a green LED for switch. That's just telling us that we have power to the unit. And then in the bottom left hand corner we're going to see a flashing red LED. Sometimes it'll flash, sometimes it'll flicker, sometimes it appears solid. And those are all normal operation. It's just telling us that there's some 900 megahertz traffic. In the bottom left hand corner we can see our tamper as well as our reset button. And for today, especially because we're going through the six steps of programming the 4204R, we've got our advance button and our program button. So to get started with the first step of selecting point number, we always hit the advance button first. We hit the advance button to scroll through the point numbers. There's one, two, three, or four. We can hit it again and it will come up to the fault light. We're not actually going to program that. So we'll bring it back to point number one and then hit program to get to step number two, which is to select the supervision window. We can see the SUP wind light is on over here. If we look straight across, none, two hours, four hours, and 96 hours are our options. It's going to default to four hours. And for this exercise, for this transmitter, we're going to leave it at four hours. If we wanted to change it, we would simply hit the advance button to get to the position that we want. And when we're there, we'll hit program to go down to step number three, which is select the output to use. So we've got our output light on and it's output one, two, three, or four. Again, you would use the advance button to scroll through. Today, we're just gonna leave it on output number one. And to get down to step number four, we hit the program button. Step number four is output type. Output type, if you look below the LEDs, you can see follow, moment, toggle, or latch. Now, follow means it's going to follow the state of the transmitter. For an example, a door contact, if it was going to follow that door contact when the door is open, the output would come on. And it would stay on until the door was closed and was restored. So as soon as that door is closed and it's restored, then the output would go back to its normal state. Moment, or momentary, means that that output is going to stay on for 8 seconds, regardless if that door was open or closed. As soon as it was open, it would come on for 8 seconds, and then the output would turn off. Toggle is kind of like a toggle key switch. We would hit the, for example, a button on a pendant to activate the output and it would stay on until we hit the button again and then it would go back to its normal position. And then latch or latching means that the output would stay latched in until someone came back to the receiver and hit the reset button on the receiver. So for this exercise, we're gonna leave it at follower and to go on to step number five, we hit the program button. All the lights on the left hand side are solid and the point number that we're programming is blinking. So we're programming point number one. The transmitter that we're gonna to point to, program to this point is gonna be this transmitter. This is the EN 1210 transmitter. I'm gonna show you a real easy way to open it. You can see this tab up here. You put your thumb on that tab and push. The cover comes off relatively easily. So on the inside of our transmitter, we've got our reset button right there. And so if I push that reset button, which is step number five, the lights go out. The number one is not flashing anymore, and that tells us that this transmitter did get programmed in. Now, in programming this transmitter, I wanted to make it a normally open contact to be wired into this. 
And so you can see that there is a two pin header. I have a jumper to put across that two pin header. We put it on there and anytime we put a jumper on or take a jumper off of there, we always want to hit the reset button. That gives the transmitter a chance to acknowledge that the change was made. So as you can see, our delete light is not on, which would designate an alarm. So I want to point out what some of those lights mean if we had our cover on. The top light would be our alarm light. The second light down is tamper. Third light down is low battery. Fourth light is supervision. And then of course that fifth light, that switch light is just power. So right now the receiver is telling us that we have a tamper. We hold the transmitter back up and push the tamper spring down. We can see that go out and it will come back on when we have the cover off or the tamper spring engaged. So I'll put the cover back on this tr transmitter. And we'll put that aside for now. And to get to the first step in programming our second transmitter, we would hit the advance button, not once, but twice because we want to get to point number two. And then we will hit program so that we can get to our second step of selecting the supervision window. Now for this transmitter, we're going to use one of our pendant transmitters, the EN1235S. Let's say that they're going to take this off site. So the default comes up as four hours, but we don't want it to be four hours. We want it to be none. So we hit our advance button until it's on none. And to get to our third step of selecting our output to use, we hit program. Drops, drops it down to output. Now it's going to default to output number two because this is point number two. We're going to go ahead and leave it there because that's going to be fine for our programming today. And we're going to hit program to get down to step number four of selecting our output type. Now for this example, instead of leaving it at follower, we're going to hit the advance button to select momentary. And then to get to step number five, we're going to hit our program button. All the lights on the left hand side are going to be lit up. And the number two is flashing this time because that's the point number that we're trying to program. Now here's the transmitter we're going to program. I'm going to show you an easy way to open this one. There's a pry point at the bottom. And if we put button side down, we can stick our screwdriver in there and pry. And that cover comes off pretty easily. Now you can see in this one, I don't have a battery in it yet. And I want to show you what happens if you do put a battery in. A battery is just like pushing the reset button. So if I put this battery in, you can see all the lights on the left hand side are not solid anymore and the number two is not flashing because it took the registration of this transmitter as step number five. You can always hit the reset button again just to verify and then we'll put our cover back on this one. And let's test it out for a moment. So if we press the button we can see the LEDs come on for delete, which was the for the alarm, and also for point number two. We'll do it again, telling us that this was point number two. So with that one finished, now the last step in the six steps is to verify before we put our receiver cover on that all of our transmitter covers are on, everything's mounted where it's supposed to be, and the last thing we do before we put our receiver cover on is to press this reset button in the bottom left hand corner of the receiver. We press that because as we were programming one of the transmitters went into tamper and this fault output here for a tamper and a low battery will stay latched in. So we want to clear that out before we put the cover back on. And as we put our cover back on, that concludes the six steps to programming the EN4204R.